So that's basically how then you can write down a lattice Boltzmann when you do that. So you, again, I mean, this is the lattice gas zero automatic was referring to with the uh, motion according to the microscopic velocities, the collision part. And then in, in lattice Boltzmann, you have the same. So this, this part of he, here, actually this is like the advection. This is something that simply tells you how, in which direction you have to move. You do the same now for this probability. Now, what changes here, what, what uh, uh, Suchi and Higuera did was to say, well, now I linearize this collision operator. So this is linear, is the, this, the deviation with respect to the equilibrium. And then I will have here a matrix because it's linear. So this is a, a, a numbers, a set of numbers, which because it will live on this discrete space, this will be a matrix uh, that is de de determined by um, the relative velocities at a given moment. And then uh, one has to be to ensure then that this Lij conserves, I mean, has the right properties, the symmetries. But if you do that, then we have a method that where now it's linear. And as you say, as you see, I do not need to compute anything. There is not, no rules that I need to worry about here, Lij. I can prescribe this a priori, and that's really what makes it much more uh, efficient. So one, we, we, one keeps the discrete space time, the fact that one has a limited number of velocities, uh, and then now F is a continuous density. So everything is local. This is highly parallelizable. So it's a very efficient algorithm to, to exploit in, uh, in, in, in computers, in supercomputers. So that, that's basically what allows to reach scales that are difficult to get otherwise. And that's what makes this a very, very powerful uh, computational tool. So le let me, uh, like here I open a parenthesis uh, just to make it uh, a bit more clear what is the connection with kinetic theory a bit more explicitly. I mean, for, for those of you who have uh, done uh, look at this in, in your uh, undergrad courses, like a reminder, for those of you who do not know anything, maybe just give you a glimpse of what is behind the Boltzmann equation. And for those of you that are not particularly interested, you can just uh, rest for a couple of slides. I go through this and then I will resume uh, the, I will go in detail about what are the properties of, of the lattice Boltzmann. But I thought it's, it's good to, again, to put it in context. Uh, I go and jump back to the, to the 19th century and actually Boltzmann thought about how to uh, express or formulate a mechanical, uh, a proper mechanical description of the collective behavior of a gas, of, of a system. And actually what he derived is exact for a dilute gas. And, and he had the, at that point was uh, not obvious to think in those terms, but in terms of the probability. So it's, it's a one body probability distribution. So it's the probability of having a particle at position X moving in, in with velocity V. And essentially he says, well, how does this distribution changes? And obviously there is a part, if, if they have a momentum, I mean, P over M is the velocity, the, the velocity will mean that there is a change in position. If there is an external force, then there will be a change in momentum. So these two are like one body uh, properties that are directly associated to the kinet to the kinematics of, of the system. And then there will be a collision part. And the collision means that when two atoms come together, how they interact. And that's the non-trivial, non-linear part, as I was already hinting in the previous uh, slides. So then for pairwise, if you assume that you are in a dilute limit, you can think that these collisions take place by pairs of particles, two at a time, as basically you see normally when you look collisions in mechanics, and then you start looking at pairwise collisions. Uh, and, and he basically built on that mechanical uh, framework. So and then he, he basically described the collision process that depends on the potential. So, and then again, this is, I mean, I will not go in detail, but the, the collision can be framed in terms of pairs, you know, the, the densities of incoming and outgoing particles, depends on the relative velocity, and then it depends on the effective uh, section uh, and, and then the cross section. And, and this uh, ensures, I mean, that in this collision, mass, momentum, and energy are conserved. So you can write down in more detail what is this cross-section mechanically as, as I mean, this is basically adapted from 
what you could find, or I don't know if you follow a course in mechanics. Uh, at the end, what is important is that this collision for pairwise interactions can be expressed in terms of the rate, so the, the number of events. You know, this is how likely it is that two particles are within the cross section uh, with relative velocities p and p2 for incoming and then the outgoing velocities and then this depends on the two body uh, the probability of having the two particles yeah so the the Boltzmann equation depends on the one particle distribution function but the collision depends on the two body so actually you have what technically is called a hierarchy because then we need to know what is the evolution for the two particle distribution function so it's a non-closed problem now what Boltzmann did was to uh, assume what is called the molecular chaos assumption to say that particles come uncorrelated so if there is no correlation then this two body correlation uh, this two body probability of having uh, sorry this is wrong it should be uh, yeah so well, I mean it's at, at, at position r sorry yes but then with different momenta can be expressed as the product of the one body distribution function of having probability of having one particle at position r and momentum p and the other one the same position but then with a different momentum and this this kills correlation between particles which is an approximation but if you do that and then you bring this in here then you can close the equation it's non-linear because it depends on the product of two but then you have a dynamic equation that depends only on the one body a probability distribution and, and this is how you mathematically write it and basically uh, in equilibrium the the distributions have to be the equilibrium distributions and the collision operator vanishes and this has a number of properties i don't go into that but then you can show that if it's invariant this equilibrium distribution can be expressed in terms of the energy and momentum and from there a boltzmann could derive that you you have in equilibrium the maxwell distribution functions and uh, there are a number of, of uh, outcomes that come from, from there. And if you uh, sort of like take a conserved field uh, that depends on position and momentum, again, if you integrate over momentum, then you can derive the evolution equations for these quantities. And if momentum is conserved uh, and mass is conserved, you can show that if you, I mean, this is a formal expression. If, if, if A is conserved when I integrate with the collision of it will be zero. So if mass, so the, the number of particles is conserved, and so this will be true, then when, when you do the integral of the Boltzmann equation with this average being zero, this is the evolution that you have. So this is uh, basically integrating this equation over P. Again, you can do that as an exercise if you want. Then you can see that for the density, you, you recover the continuity equation. And then for momentum, you, you have a momentum a conservation equation that depends on a quantity. This is a, that then is, you can identify as the stress. So you, you have a well-defined framework from where, again, you can go from the kinetics to the uh, uh, hydrodynamic variables. And as I mentioned, this, this uh, collision operator, sorry, let me go back. Collision operator that I was showing here is, is this kind of, okay, with, with, sorry, with the molecular chaos assumption involves these probabilities, you know, the, the rate at which they, they are sort of, they can be next to each other times these uh, products of these two densities. And then if now I assume that this F are the equilibrium plus a variation and I linearize, I can linearize this collision operator. And this one was done in the 60s by Badnagar, Gross and Krug. And then uh, at the end, this uh, complex uh, collision operator can be expressed as the variation, this delta F1 is F1 minus F1 equilibrium divided by a characteristic relaxation time. And that was also a powerful, I mean, that, that is, the, the limitation is that this is true if only if you are not too far from equilibrium. For example, if you have a, a shock wave uh, or situations where you have a very a concentrated or very fast uh, variation on, on the status of a system will not work. But, but otherwise, it was very insightful. Remember, in the 60s, computers also were not that powerful. So analytically, it allowed to work, to, to make a lot of progress in exploiting the tools or the framework, sorry, of kinetic theory of the Boltzmann equation to, to obtain explicit expressions and to understand the emergence of collective behavior from, from this uh, kinetic framework. Okay, so uh, I close here the parentheses. So those of you who were not particularly interested can just now come back. 
and as I said, then if so, th this is a this uh, matrix. If if you as if we assume that there is only one characteristic relaxation time scale, then one can even have a, a even simpler uh, expression for this lattice Boltzmann, where this matrix that mixes different velocities it's only one number, and this is called the simple uh, the exponential relaxation time BGK model for lattice Boltzmann. Okay, and then but again, if, if I go back. It, it really has this structure that is linear with a, a relaxation time. So this, this L matrix is a matrix of relaxation times. Uh, the only thing is that because we have different velocities, then we can have different relaxation times for different velocities. Okay. Right, so um, then I wanted now to emphasize that if, if I start from, this is the lattice Boltzmann. So you, you can think of lattice Boltzmann as a linearized version of a lattice implementation of the Boltzmann equation. Then, uh, as I said, we don't have Boolean variables, but then this is the kinetic. So this is like the distribution function. If I, I show you in standard kinetic theory, I do the marginal, I integrate over momenta, and then I have the corresponding uh, hydrodynamic local variables. I can do the same here, summing over velocities. I also did that for lattice gas cellular automata. So I keep on repeating, but just to see you the coherence. If I sum now over all these uh, microscopic velocities or the directions in which these densities or these, these probabilities can move on a lattice, then I will have the density at a given node. If I do the same now with the multiplied by the corresponding velocity, the first moment of the distribution, then I have the momentum, so the velocity, the hydrodynamic velocity at the node. If I do it for the second, then I will have the momentum advection plus the stress. And I could now go and look at the third, fourth moment. So these are then a higher moment. These are hydrodynamically not so interesting, but those also characterize the kinetic model. In the jargon, if you read uh, papers, uh, they talk about ghost modes. And but again, that's now technical, so I will not go into that. And then this is defined on a lattice. And uh, I didn't emphasize much, but this has to be, I was showing you for the lattice gas automata had this uh, hexagonal or triangular lattice uh, in, in general. I mean, and again, this is jargon just in case you see it. So we can have models with different dimensionalities. So n can be two or three. And then I have to say how many velocities. I was showing you these triangular lattices with six or eight velocities, but uh, I could have also higher number of velocities. For example, let me show you here. This is uh, in three dimensions with 14 velocities. This would be, say, the set of velocities to the corresponding neighboring nodes or 18. If I allow particles at rest, so zero velocity, they will have 19 or 15. And, and again, there are a number of them. The, the experience also shows that in order to minimize spurious artifacts, I, I told you that you, one, because we live on a lattice, this is not isotropic. And it's, uh, so one, one, the, this set of, of uh, lattices in particular minimize an isotropy effect. So they are normally reference uh, lattices on which the, the, the models are defined, okay? So that's what I mentioned. So, so there is an issue about the symmetry requirements to try to avoid lattice and isotropies. And actually this is really very pretty much associated to the symmetries of the lattices itself. That there is, uh, and that's shared by lattice Boltzmann, lattice gas cell automatas and other type of uh, cellular automatas. Actually, there is a nice paper by Wolfram, um, the developer of Mathematica, uh, that, that basically tries to systematically analyze for different type of lattices, what are the isotropy uh, that at different uh, higher, different moments in the, in the hydrodynamic on the, let's say, on, on these uh, marginals. Um, I didn't talk too much about the equilibrium distribution. I mean, when we linearize, we have an equilibrium distribution. When I was talking on, on kinetic in the kinetic theory, I mentioned that you, one can show that this equilibrium distribution is the Maxwell uh, um, Boltzmann distribution for momenta. Uh, in here, because we are on a lattice, one has also to look what is the equilibrium distribution. Again, this is a bit technical, but one can do that. And uh, one can write the equilibrium distribution in this way. Like, uh, I mean, if you think that uh, C, uh, C, uh, C i are like the velocity, so this is the velocity, the, the, the microscopic velocity. G, G here is the density times the hydrodynamic velocity. So 
you have the density, velocity, velocity square. This is actually like a low uh, velocity expansion of a Maxwellian. I mean, a Maxwellian is a, a Gaussian, and this is a parabola. Because we live with a finite set of velocities, we cannot recover a Maxwellian. We have a distribution that corresponds to a Maxwellian, but up to the number of velocities, microscopic velocities we have, because we'll have, say, 14, 15, 19 velocities, OK? And, and again, one has to work this out, but again, this can be done and uh, identify what is the uh, Fi equilibrium that should be put here to be consistent with the lattice uh, so that then in equilibrium, we recover the proper uh, behavior for this lattice Boltzmann model, okay? So, so if you want from a practical point of view, if, if one has to implement a lattice Boltzmann model, this is, I mean, there are two types of inputs. The, one has to specify these numbers here in this matrix, and one has to specify this equilibrium distribution. Equilibrium distribution has this form. And again, there are different ways to derive that. So if you're interested, in, there, there are ways to, to understand. But roughly speaking, you can think of it as, as this uh, low dense velocity expansion for the, for the Maxwell. And I wanted to finish by saying that this part, by saying that uh, I mentioned in, in that jerarchy that there was a possibility in kinetic theory to derive the uh, Navier-Stokes equations from the Boltzmann equation. And actually one can also do the same expansion from the lattice Boltzmann equation. And if by following essentially the, the theoretical framework to do this expansion, it's a, a, a bit technical, but that was settled by Chapman and Enskog, uh, assuming that on hydrodynamic scales, gradients in space and time derivatives evolve smoothly. And with that assumption, one, I mean, one can prove that it's possible to get to the hydrodynamic equation. So mass conservation, the continuity equation, and then the Navier-Stokes equation, where here maybe it's important to indicate that when we get to the hydrodynamic level, we have, say, here, uh, viscosity appears because we have uh, shear stresses and also uh, density because we can have uh, typically waves or the, the fluid is a certain degree of compressibility uh, in this limit in which uh, we do not care or we do not take into account the, the role of uh, interactions then there is here a pressure if you want that's uh, the density times what would be the speed of sound squared uh, that is associated to the possibility to have uh, density uh, moving through pressure waves. And actually, this, that's, that's a functionally what should have emerged, that's what emerges. This viscosity here is related to, the, uh, to, to this matrix. So I did not explicitly write down how this matrix should look like in general. So, this matrix, as I mentioned, will have a number. I mean, it's a matrix, so you can think of this matrix. Uh, it, I mean, it's symmetric because I mean, it's the same for velocity, say one six or six one. So you can identify the eigenvalues, and the the eigenvalue associated to the stress then uh, is the one that determines the viscosity. So if you want, um, if I know the matrix, one of the eigenvalues of the matrix, then will determine what is the viscosity. So the viscosity hydrodynamics is related to this relaxation time that comes from this matrix L. If there would be only one, as I said, for the BGK type, then this lambda would be the tau that I was showing before. Okay, but in general is one of the one needs to identify the again, but again, that's a bit technical. And, and again, because there is um, a certain, I mean, the fluid is uh, compressible. There is There are two viscosities. This is the shear viscosity. There is also bulk viscosity. And the bulk viscosity is then related to another uh, of these eigenvalues of the L matrix. If there is only one, then these two lambdas would be tau, the same, OK? And then here, you also see this CS squared. This CS is, strictly speaking, the speed of sound. And actually, I didn't emphasize, but it also emerges here from the equilibrium distribution function. Uh, the equilibrium distribution I was emphasizing, it, it's like a, a parabolic expansion. But then there is a prefactor here that tells you what is the speed of sound. 
and that speed of sound is associated to how this will uh, develop through the matrix and this number depends again when you plug this equilibrium in the lattice Boltzmann and look the behavior in equilibrium that gives you a number and and that says what I mean, typically for example for d3 q19 the speed of sound is is uh, um, one over square root of three uh, so and that also tells you that in order to operate hydrodynamically you want to be in a hydrodynamic limit where typically velocity at the hydrodynamic velocity is smaller than the speed of sound because we are low, low Mach numbers then this means that if, if this speed of sound is one over square root of t three sorry then velocity should be smaller than that so what one has also to know these numbers to uh, to ensure that the simulation is set up in parameters that correspond to physically meaningful regimes okay so one can identify that c is there and that's what uh, feature here in this term so it's it's consistent and that determines the hydrodynamic behavior so in a way by doing this chaman enskog expansion one can identify which features of which parameters of the model are determining the hydrodynamic response of the of the fluid and and therefore this means that we can if we go back here uh, by uh, properly identifying the matrix L, the corresponding uh, relaxation times, that will tell us how the viscosity changes, uh, or we can control the viscosity better. And then in the equilibrium distribution, by choosing the, the, the lattice symmetry, that will give me these coefficients A and then the value Cs, which sets the speed of sound. So you see in, in, in this linearization procedure that I was telling you at the beginning that was introduced by Gera and, and Suchi, we do not longer talk about how the, the viscosity or the speed of sound depend on the microscopic potential of how atoms interact or in the lattice gas or automata framework on the collision. This collision table is like the microscopics and that collision table would determine both the pressure and therefore the speed of sound and the viscosity and that's also true in kinetic theory everything comes from the interaction potential but then when we break this connection by saying well effectively i have now uh, because i linearized this collision matrix this, this set of uh, rates and then uh, in this case then the, the properties of the symmetry of the equilibrium that i have to bring in that's how I can tune and modify, control these effective uh, transport coefficients or transport properties of the medium and also equilibrium properties. And, and then I can think of, of this as an uh, effective kinetic model. Re and, and I'm not bound, say, to the, to the gas regime in, in the case of the Boltzmann or to a particular microscopic description. And, and that's why then this becomes a useful tool for more general fluids, because I know uh, how to characterize them in the corresponding limit. Okay, I'll stop here in this first part of the lecture. <laughs>